I'm I only have ten foil right. this, this week because I, I threw the ten foil out. There's no such thing as ten foil in this uh, in this universe. It's just nutty. It's just crazy. So all that all, everything you thought was a lie is real, and everything you thought was real was a lie. Welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the podcast where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I am Scott. <laughs> And, I'm and Sam. once again, I fanned him. Then the recording started on Sam, and he's giggling because he has no idea when I started. All right, so <laughs> I, I, I love <laughs> it. I, I love it. I All love right, it. so welcome to uh, uh, our podcast for season one, episode six. This extraordinary being, uh, Sam, a, a very deep episode, uh, lore rich. Before we jump into it, though, why don't you tell everyone where they can find us? Make sure that you go to nerdcyclopedia.com that's where you find all our links and everything but you know if you don't end up doing that make sure that you follow us on instagram facebook and um twitter at nerdcyclopedia also make sure that you know leave us some feedback at watching watchmen at nerdcyclopedia.com um make sure that you're subscribing that's the one of the most important things we're doing these video youtube podcasts and everything we need you to to hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification button we enjoy you guys leaving feedback for these past couple weeks and everything so you know we're we're we're, we're gathering fans we're 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 um getting you uh, guys on the, in the wagon and everything taking you guys on the road with us you know y'all you guys are watching watchmen right with us we're so happy about that and um most of all, just make sure that, you know, you're, um, you know, just like I said, just leaving us that five star rating every any time that you, you know, listen to our podcast, because that raises awareness for our stuff. It's very important, guys. <laughs> this is an awesome episode. I'm super excited to talk about it. I had a lot of oh, thoughts yeah. uh, about this that are right. super deep and some that were not so deep. Uh, yep. Also, uh, I really liked the Watchmen graphic. I like that smoke. Oh, yeah. I like that a lot. Right. Uh, the switch to Minutemen, <laughs> seeing the Minutemen, uh, seeing the show coming right on into the yeah. show. With, with the, yeah. But yeah. interestingly enough, the disclaimer this week is real for us. <laughs> it's not fake and in the show for that show. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, in, it's not in universe. It's actually it's real. It's a very you real know. situation. If, if you, um, I had a situation with my wife. She's like real photosensitive. I mean, th this episode didn't really, like, really affect her, but um, what was that movie that came out like years ago? Uh, Cloverfield. Oh, no, Cloverfield. No, no, not Cloverfield. Clover Cloverfield. It didn't have a lot of strobe stuff, but there was a lot of jittery stuff that, and she ended up getting like, you know, sick because of that. So, I mean, it's amazing. Like, I was fine. She was She was just like, ooh. You were fine. Man. That's the important <laughs> part of the story. You were okay. Yes, I was okay, I guys. Could do it. So, right. you know, don't worry about my wife. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to worry a little bit. Uh, we just don't want her getting sick. So. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, great ep um, great beginning there. You know, it, um, the smoke, um, you know, revealing, like, the Minutemen. So that was a really important thing because the show is called American Hero Story. So for them to to to, to wipe the smoke away and just uh, make the Minutemen appear, that was just a, a, e a good Easter egg for all you, um, you know, Watchmen um, graphic novel readers and stuff. Absolutely. Uh Seeing the seeing the maybe that's the way the graphics look like in universe, right? That's what the Minimum logo looks like. Uh, we don't start out directly there, though. Uh, at, well, after we see the initial inter interrogation and beating scene, <laughs> <laughs> no. the, the Zack Snyder ish, yeah. you know, um, directed, I'm gonna um, talk bloody like Rorschach. Rorschach. Like I talk like Batman oh. from the Dark Knight. <laughs> I'm gonna make you see my face, cheese. All right. It it was a it was a heck of a way to to start the episode to um to sort of top hat it you know with um them specifically interrogating Hooded Justice because you know because so. of Nelson's affair with J Edgar Hoover. Oh man, uh, Nelson gets around, buddy. Nelson, Nelson, Nelson. <laughs> I'm excited to get to Nelson later. Nelson's cool. Uh, <laughs> all right, so so Lori's trying to get Angela to sign a release uh, so that they can pump her stomach, or else she's going to have nostalgia overdose, which mm -hmm. we found out last week uh, on PDPedia was going to lead to some problems, including you know uh, loss of memory and you know uh, you know it was like what don't be don't be in the care of a, a pet or don't have a like a child in your care, like it was like wild, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch, watch yourself yeah. while having sex yeah, with it because you be may have some involuntary involuntary orgasms and stuff oh. you know i was waiting to see if it was gonna be like a wet spot or something like that let me stop <laughs> hey man i i hey there was some sorry going on i didn't hear i didn't hear what you just said the last 15 seconds of it. 
<laughs> I mean, the the the, the, the um description said involuntary orgasms. I'm like, how does that even work? You know, it was some crazy stuff going on with nostalgia stuff. I mean, don't take too many of those people, please don't. You know, but yeah. So um, um we're, we're getting fingers. involuntary <laughs> orgasms <laughs> on the bus. Oh man. <laughs> You take those, you don't know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen. <laughs> right. Oh, right. man. So, anyway. So, Angela doesn't sign the waiver, so she's going to she gonna take a trip. <laughs> she's going to take a trip somewhere, Sam. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, so she does, in fact. And that is the episode we're about to see. Uh, the episode titled This Extraordinary Being. Um, I mm-hmm. believe this to be talking about my buddy will reeves the yeah 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 it takes its title from um um hollis mason's under the hood book yes. right uh, uh excerpt in that book i believe so the first memory and 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 i want to say a couple blanket things about the memory here uh the way it's shot the way it's cut together so excellent uh we have so many different sort of uh surreal in media uh, trans transfers between scenes uh, you know, doors opening in from interior precincts to exterior shots of the next day, day turning into night. Um, surreal cutouts of in color memories from the Tulsa riot in 21. Uh, artistic flourishes abound uh, in this. Oh, one. man, it was it was it was a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, um, the 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 special effects and the graphics and just the transition, especially the transitions, the way they had to move the camera throughout the episode mm-hmm. was definitely not normal. You know, like like not like your normal episode. And but it wasn't so weird as to not as to take us out of the whole narrative and the plot throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this was um this was this was very interesting. It reminded me of this. Um... <laughs> There's a story we read in high school where a guy like mm-hmm. a bit of tea cake and then had a bunch of memories about it. It kind of reminds me of how that was presented. The fact uh-huh. that it's presented in black and white is super interesting because it, it evokes that sort of old static, like old timey photos. Right. right. Almost Feel, as right. if the world wasn't in color back then. Uh, oh. Black, and white. Uh, black right. and white also interesting because of the connotations morality wise. Um, you know, we talked about Rorschach Great point. and mm-hmm. consequentialism. And no, uh, no compromise. Black and white. Mm. That's a uh, also race. Also so. race. Mm. Thank you, Sam, for bringing that up. Uh, <laughs> appreciate that. I just didn't want to be the one to do it. So we got some really interesting stuff there. Uh, also, it's this is all shot like a like a noir mm-hmm. detective story. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, dark. yeah. Great pickup. Very mm-hmm. dark. Very. Uh, mm-hmm. I had to turn all the lights off in my uh, sumptuous Nerdcyclopedia studios in order to view <laughs> the nuances of the of the shots. So, uh, shot really dark, a little like Sin City, kind of in that way, right? Uh, not hyper violent. Yeah, but... not but not as it, but much better. Let me stop. Sin City wasn't that bad a movie. <laughs> Well, the second one was awful. There was no second Sin City. <laughs> but, but but great point because a, a lot of the um tr- a lot of the tricks was done in a in a real real smooth type type of way. Like I keep bringing up the camera movement, it was like a lot of one tracking shots to transition into different you know um areas of color being used and um and within scenes we had like you know. Um, um, you know, so characters talking, and then um, the flashback within a scene, but not necessarily a transition. You maybe had like a character, like the um, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, I think I know the scene you're talking about, um, where he's describing where he found her in the in the field, in the bar. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. That that was another one. But I'm talking about another one where he was talking about when he was talking with uh, what what was the lady's name. You? June. Okay. Well, he was talking to June in the right, um. I didn't. In, uh, I didn't like TV. <laughs> I didn't. <do> <laughs> Hashtag hate Scott and hate Sam. You know, if we're not getting this lazy. right. Anyway, lazy. So um, they were at the jazz club, mm-hmm. and they were you know having dinner and everything. And then he was talking about they were going um talking about like the she was asking about the history of where he came from um as far as like the whole massacre and everything and then he was describing what was going on and then we see not like a um a transition or a flashback we see an actual 
uh, Ku Klux Klan character, oh, yeah. you um, uh, pull the gun and um, you know, um, <laughs> you know, shoot shoot one of the um, what one of the ladies and everything, you know, right on the ground and everything, right during the scene as they were talking. Yeah. So it was a is is a really and then to point out what you was talking about towards the end of the episode, <clears throat> um, when she asked him again to describe um how they met. You know, and in the background, we see what we saw in like the first episode. Mm -hmm. And you're right. So the only pieces of this that are in color, there's some color that seeps in on the edges when some real 2019 people are there. But most of the color is from 1921. It's from Will's Memories of the Riot. Uh, okay. And, okay. And that yeah. is deployed. Right. Like right. you're saying, uh, the guys, the Ku Klux Klan members shooting, shooting lady. And of course, when that cop car pulls off, dragging the two bodies behind it, uh, which mm -hmm. was super... You know, just we talked about PDPedia saying that um, Spielberg made White Horse instead of Schindler's List, and how that pop mm -hmm. of red, whew, mm -hmm. that pop of red was like a real distinctive because it was the rest of the movie was in black and white, and all of a sudden this red pops up. Exactly the same ah, effect okay. here uh, in this in this sequence here. So there's a lot of those instances. I try to call them out, so hopefully I'll remember them. Well, you never know. It's a long episode, and I'm only a one man with only half <laughs> half a brain. All right. Uh, so the first memory, and the, the thing about camera movement, you were talking about this. I wanted to mention this. It felt it felt like the way a, a memory dream is like. You know, you ever you ever dream something that happened a long time ago, or it, like something that's happened to you is a setting of a dream where the action is completely unrelated to it, but the, the setting feels sort of hyper hyper realistic, but a little bit a right. little bit sort of blurry. Right. Right. I feel right. like this presented that, that really well. And um, part of that is that your perspective does shift a lot when you're when you're dreaming from first to third person. I mean, for some people, anyway. Not trying to intrude in yeah, your dream, great, Sam. Great, I don't want to say well, no, well, great point. I mean, you know, um, it was a lot. It was definitely different perspectives. We got, a, you know, a few scenes with the perspective of from Will's perspective, mm -hmm. and then back to um, Angela's perspective, back to, you know, um, another character's perspective. So, yeah, I mean, that that is and, and the way the camera flow back and forth. Um, was really representative of that. So it was like a, a, a continuous mm -hmm. shot. It was a lot of continuous shot. You know, shots of um, you know, scenes and everything. We like that stuff. We liked it in Goodfellas. Uh, <laughs> we liked it a lot. I like Children of Men a lot because of that stuff. Children of excellent Men, movie. yeah, excellent movie. Yeah, a really good. Doesn't movie. get a lot of play. Very good. Um, you ever want to see uh, what John Lennon would have looked like at seventy? There's a scene where that's in there, so that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. All right, so so Police Academy graduation. This scene is messed up. This is one of the first of many messed up things that happened to Will over the course mm -hmm. of this episode. <clears throat> uh, I'll blanketly say I, dis uh, I disagree with the way he's treated. I'll just put that out there. Um, so, Police Academy graduation, and not a very funny one. I like the, I like mm -hmm. the other Police Academies better than this one. Uh, the White Chief skips over Will, and... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it was something something common back then, especially, like, in the early... Well, uh, back then, you know, a lot of... Um, uh, racial you know prejudices and just um just judgments you know um they they really had power to 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 ignore and you know um skip upon um certain accomplishments you know real will really wanted to be a um he wanted to be a police whole life you know so yeah so um from the the rack from the movie and everything you know trust in the law and everything as we find out um, so he made it to the academy, and he's the only black, um, you know, cadet there. I'm sure it was super know? easy for him to make it through the police academy too, being the only. I'm sure there were no right. instances of prejudice that were he had to work. With. And the way, and the way it was designed and set up as far as the graduation was that uh, the the white you know captain, um, you know, um, gave everybody you know all the you know Caucasian. You know, mails their medals or you know um, badges and stuff, whatever he was putting on them. I can't. <laughs> but and um, had the other black, you know, uh, captain do it for the uh, for the only black one. You know, as a um, as a way to strategically, you know, to to do the whole ceremony and everything. So all everything was orchestrated and planned, and it was accepted. That's the hard thing to really when you look at these histories and everything to see that um you know these things actually took place it was it's, it's a hard and tough thing to actually watch you know but the the fact of the matter is it did take place 
And um, <clears throat> even though Watchmen is an alternate history telling an alternate history perspective, you know, a lot of these things that took place as far as like, um, you know, um, black people being um, skipped upon and being, sh you know, sh you know, uh, shunted back. And it, it just all it, it's just all disheartening to see, you know, in a um, in a um, in just a real, you know, in a real perspective. If I, if I Absolutely. Say. And, you know, 1938. Let's let's remember, you know, this is this mm -hmm. is 17 years before before Brown versus Board of Education. Uh, this is right. Nine years before Jackie Robinson even integrated Major League Baseball. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, it, it's 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 a part of our history that isn't uh, something I think that most Americans are proud of. But it's something that I think when you're talking about issues of of justice, applied justice, right, of missing justice, mm -hmm. injustice, uh, this, mm -hmm. this void of justice it, it, you can't shy away from the real causes of that you can't and systemic systemic racism especially you know in the first i mean forever but especially and most acutely in the first half of the 20th century like the comparison right. to now right uh it's something that engenders it's something that can engender vigilante violence if you if you do not properly police crime Right. Well, it's something that can do that. And, and so for a a vigilante to come from the black community makes a lot of sense in that way, because they are yeah, they it, were denied justice. Right. They had, right. Right. What they were right, doing. Right. I mean, right. Right. And and and, and combined the fact that um, um, Will was already angry guy is, um, you know, his his wife, you know, alluded to. Um, he was an angry man with um, a baton and a, and a, a stick and everything yeah. and a gun. You know, and she was afraid, more afraid of what he was going to do because of his anger issues mm -hmm. and everything. And you're talking about systemic racism. Um, it's, 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 it's disappointing that in a system that just accepted a uh, uh, a way of hating and just, you know, kicking, you know, another person to the curb because of their color of the skin and everything. It's just a sad, it's just, it's just, it's just a sad, sad commentary on how our country was, you know, a long time ago. And some, you know, some stages it, it's, it's just buried and it's being still buried and it's coming back up again and everything. But, um, you know, just going back to this, what, what they were talking about in the show, vigilante justice in the black community was probably like a fantasy and a dream, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, um, in, in, uh, in a lot of aspects. But the fact that it didn't really happen, mm -hmm. you know, and it wasn't really going to happen, um, it's just, you know, black folks just had to bide their time until something better came along. And they just had to play, you know, within the, the realms of the, and trust the system. Mm -hmm. They had to really trust the system to do justice for them, you know, um, because the system was put in place to make everybody, you know, um, feel justified, but it was the individuals running, running the system that sort of, um, what I want to say here, that sort of um, used the rules to bent the rules to their, to their, to their, you know, to their will and everything, you know, to to, to sort of flip that a little bit. <laughs> but um, it's it's just amazing how. Like I said, you know, this is this is just being told in this particular show like that. Uh, to to have something like this that's so. You know, this is this is ground that media that medium has covered, right? We, we've seen this sort of thing expressed in other shows uh, over time. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so this isn't this is to the point where it ha the the old times were racist is almost a TV trope, right? Like that's something mm -hmm. we know we know that's something you're maybe gonna bump into if you're in 1938, right? <clears throat> it's around right. is the way of thinking, right. right? Right. And so for for a show in 2019 especially in you know in, in in a climate that's at least at least everybody's angry i think everybody's talking a lot everyone's loud right now it's maybe the right, way to think right, about right 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 you know it, yeah, a lot of chatter going on a lot of on, chatter especially you know, about this not, show not, too not, so mm -hmm, yep. so to be able to present this sort of i don't want to say a reimagining but this revelation about a character and and what it's going to say about superheroism especially in the watchman universe mm -hmm. is is so it, the fact that it's it's unique while not necessarily being like super surprising, I think says At something a lot about time, the, what we're seeing. It says something a lot about the 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 skills that we're seeing on display here from the film. Right, 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 right. Sort of speak and also you know make a commentary on like um race. Right. 
you know, essentially what you're doing and everything, because we all, you know, as Rashman readers know that Hooded Justice was a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we assumed that he was a white guy, you know, in the, um, in the comics, but it was never a history put upon that particular character. So it gave a lot of wiggle room for Damon Lindelof and his staff to really, um, do like a whole origin. And really, is this story really about Angela or is it about Will? You know, <laughs> it's about I mean, through, through throughout, you know, through these fast, these, these episodes so far. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how Angela fits into <laughs> Will's story as far as, you know, see, you can kind of see the, um, I have, what was Marcus's deal? Was Marcus like a mm-hmm. comedian S guy? I want to know more about him because that face painting thing, the fact that, mm-hmm. that Marcus did it and Will did it. And Angela mm-hmm. does it makes me feel like there's mm-hmm. something that carried that forward to that generation. Um, so it makes me think that maybe Marcus was a failed vigilante or something along those lines, or had to flee to you know Vietnam to get away from well, well, bad beaters. If, if you if you're noticing, and it's something that um that Lori sort of uh, alluded to, maybe like was it episode two, three, four, one of those? She's talking about masks of having a um and the reason why people put on masks um it sort of like hide their trauma. Yeah. You know, you from that hide their pain, protect you from your pain and everything. And it's a theme running in these in these in these episodes, especially with people putting on masks that they are going through or have been in some sort of, you know, real deep trauma and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, Will, we know, who has been through like the whole Tulsa massacres and everything. Yeah. So we know that and trauma. historically you know, grievous trauma. Historically grievous trauma. Yeah, yeah. We know about Lori's situation. Um, Angela, she, um, she grew up in, um, you know, Vietnam, you know, um, so she, she has been through like a, um, a bit of a trauma and everything, but she, um, what we, what would we say about her as far as her trauma and why she puts on Well, there's the white knight. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What am I talking about? Yeah. That's her trauma right there. Oh man. Great one. <laughs> so, probably some her her whole reason of putting on Kyle's a mask accident, because of the white knight. Parents, all these yeah. people's lives are laced with trauma. It's one of the things that draws that is you know it's a uniting thing about them. They're all messed up. Well, it's also a great way of talking about and what what what, what the great thing of what Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons and you know Higgins did in the graphic novel was just deconstruct superheroes. Yeah. Is that's what they're doing right here as well, deconstructing. Mm-hmm. You know the um the mask will the mask adventurer the costume adventure and everything letting us know that um people putting on these masks as far as like Captain America you know Batman Superman you know all these these mainstream heroes that we see out there you know there's a reason even there's a reason why they put on those masks because they're going through some sort of like trauma in their life we know what Batman went through because he has his Batman tendencies you know. Um, Clark Kent, which we'll find out, um, you know, in this particular episode, they they sort of um, made a parallel between. <laughs> and we haven't even. Been I know, right? We're not even talking about it. It's so big. <laughs> so we'll just go. We'll, 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 let, 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 let's just go into. We'll the just scene. gloss over some of this because we talked about, you know, after uh-huh. after the graduation, we talked about this scene a little bit, where uh-huh. uh, June and Will go to nightclub, playing jazz. Yeah, and they're having yeah. drinking beer. And they have yeah. this conversation about, you know, what are you going to do with your gun and stick? You're an angry man, Will. We see Klansman gun down the woman behind him. You're an angry man. Great scene. An angry man. Yeah. And we get mm-hmm. these these memories from Tulsa, which we get in color, which is an, mm-hmm. just like, a, it's like I said, it's an interesting highlight. Mm-hmm. So Will on the beat talks to a, a German or Austrian news, newspaperman. I think Austrian from the accent, but I'm not 100%. Mm-hmm. And we see the Nazis are marching west, right? Yeah. Well, what's the next thing that happens? Well, the next thing that happens is we see there's some Nazis in New York, too, because a dude throws a Molokov cocktail into a, a delicatessen that is quite uh, is quite well advertised as being owned by Jewish people. And so so casual with this um, throwing of that Molotov, too. <laughs> well, they probably wouldn't have called it yet, that yet. Right. Because, you know, that, that happens right, like right. in the next five right. years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Those, right. Right. One of those uh, Bobby Bobby explosions, whatever they call. <laughs> Fredtacular <laughs> potions. There we go. The, the name for everything in the old days was. There's two things I know about the olden times. Number one, you go back there, you're probably gonna bump into some racism. Uh, number two, the names they had. <laughs> the, 
the names they had for everything back then were worse than the names we have for stuff now. We're we're better at naming stuff than we were back in the forties. How, how how superior must you be that you can walk down the street with you know this 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 cocktail or whatever that you're about to throw and so casually walk back into the alley thinking nothing is going to happen to you after the cops see you. After the cops see you. Not even that gets a gets a, a rise. Nope. Uh, you know. This guy, who we find out his name Fred, although I guess that doesn't really matter so much, as much as it's e- just easier to say Fred's a racist. Uh, huh. Says so a bunch of racist stuff Ain't... to Will. Oh, man. He's about to go home and watch some Amos and Andy. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Which is... Hey, this is what you that's see on worst... this show. People. That's like the third it's, worst it's... thing he says in that particular paragraph. The third worst thing. <laughs> so I'm going to go watch Amos and Andy. That's... It's... <laughs> Uh, that's... And this is just the first scene we get. I know, with right? Him. He's he's gonna be much <laughs> throwing a Molotov cocktail into a Jewish delicate test and isn't even the racistest thing this guy does. <laughs> I mean, that's <coughs> and that, I don't know how else. If I was to display this to tell you this character, I'd tell you three things about him: one, fat; two, mustache; three, very racist guy, uh, <laughs> intentionally too. Uh, all right, so so this scene here, uh, you know, Will takes him in. Mm-hmm. He's very blasé about this. We got Josh Lucas's stand-in from uh, Glory Road or maybe Hope Floats or whatever. Uh, says, you know, gives a hand signal and says, I'll take care of this. And how dare you insult Officer Reeves. And you're going to apologize to him. I think it's one of these on the way out. Well, a little hat tip or. Yep. What is this sign? Some sort of eye thing, you know. The um the captain the black captain at the beginning of the in the academy said beware of the cyclones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they were real real sly picking out this particular gang sign. I guess they didn't want anyone right. to pick up on what it was. So going like <laughs> this with their whole hand right in front of their face. <laughs> Slick. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Hey Frank. Hey, hey Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make something up that not, is not going to be so obvious, you know. <laughs> this have got the job done too. I'm just saying. Oh, well, hey, it's for TV. It's for memory. You know, I'm sure it's an exaggeration from the memory. I'm, I'm just oh, that sort man. of stuff. Right? At, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it still it has to be TV. Yeah, right? You know. <laughs> I think they picked that up from Little Rascals, right? Was it? Probably. <laughs> that was on the bottom, right? Oh, they would have done that. Hey, Fred. All right. <laughs> All right, Froggy. I brought this guy in. We didn't bring anyone in. We don't have anyone by that name here, Will. Oh, man. So what was all this? Huh? <laughs> what was that? You tell me. <laughs> you don't want to know anything about the He-Man Woman Eaters Club. Whoops. All right. He-Man Woman Eaters Club. <laughs> it's a good movie. All right. All right. Let's, let's get, let's right, get to right. it, man. Yeah, that's all funny. Right, so, so after this little... Uh, you know, avoidance of what I'd have to imagine has to be at least a felony. <laughs> you think? I, mean, I, I would have, I would have really hoped this guy would get busted for at least arson, oh, if not man. arson and property destruction and hate crimes, or whatever. Uh, so he bumps into, he bumps into this dude on the street, right? Yeah. He bumps into this dude on the street after reading action comics, number one, uh, which we are pointed out, very similar origin story to, to our buddy Will here. Yeah. Sent yeah, away right, by his great. parents from a destroyed home. Mm-hmm. Uh, sent away to grow up strong and get revenge or and or help people, I guess. Superman's different. Different place. I don't remember Juro putting like, you know, something in his um in, in Cal L's um rocket ship saying, um, what did he do? What was the thing he put in there? He said, there? Give this boy oh, whatever say, he wants. He's a monster. He's a monster. <laughs> he can kill everybody on your planet. <laughs> That was Brightburn. You know, the only difference between and, and, and this is the only difference between Dragon Ball Z and this uh-huh. is that in Dragon Ball Z they really did send them to take the planet over. They sent babies and they're like, our <laughs> baby will be fine in a couple weeks. He'll be able to beat you, so don't worry about it. I, uh, I used to uh, watch a lot of Dragon Ball Z back in the day. So hashtag DBZ. All right, so I, I we want yeah, great, great great parallel for um you know Will's origin right there. So, you know, Action Comics 1. And it shows in this in this world that, you know, comics, you know, superhero comics was a thing, you know, and it reminds people that superhero comics was a thing up until when costume uh, vigilantes start being a really big thing. 
Um, and then the pirate comics took over, you know, from there. It's pirate comics. <laughs> so, uh, actual comics number one. We have a couple references to later on. It's asked, uh, people say your strength is superhuman, like on the comic books. We hear that a oh, little yeah. bit later on. Um, all right. So, the officer's offer will arrive. The racist officers from earlier that did this whole thing offer him a ride. Might as well be like, do you want a ride? With the hand signal. Uh, Will's smarter than that. Says, no thanks. And turns out ride wasn't optional. Probably, yep, probably yep, could have yep. mentioned that and right it, up front. Saved us a little bit of time. Pro, and, and, you know, and Will, as he's in his dream, or, you know, Angela, she's in, his, in a dream state and everything. Um, we get, like, another... You know, visual of the cops riding off when Will says, "No, I don't want to ride with you." Oh you know, my, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm good and everything, and then we see like you know two bodies being dragged <laughs> in the from the back um, of the police cop, you know, car. Yeah. What's the difference between these guys and those guys? I mean, what's the difference? Yeah, they had badges. No, these guys no, had badges. No, no, no. And think about it for a society of people um, who had, couldn't trust cops. <laughs> you know, very good trust reasons. police back then and everything for for very good reason and stuff. So, I mean, the system, the systemic <laughs> um, uh, racism that was going on back then was to to say to um, at the least, um, you know, prevalent at the very least. And this sort of thing is is this mock <clears throat> execution thing is just and we kind of we like. We do most of this in third person, but this is one of those scenes where we warp into Will's body because, like, his visceral yeah. experience is so intense that yeah. Angela, like, it just distills the whole of the memory into this. Like, this is a, it gets packs this much experience into here. You know? I, I, I I love the way they did yeah. it though because if they did it any other way, like, just showed us like what exactly happened. Um, this here, and it's a great thing about what Lindelof is doing. He's not holding our hand. He's letting us get in Will's head and, you know, Angela's head and perspective of seeing everything that's going on with this whole mock execution, you know, execution and stuff. You know, he's, he's huffing and he's, you know, he's being, it's almost like we're going through it. We're, we're going through it with him. And it was already explained to us how terrible this is <clears throat> because right. looking glass already told us in detail what this was going to be like. So uh, ah, yeah, you, huh, having right, Will sure. experience this and having it plot and the, the sound kind of coming in, they say when this happens, your blood stays up in your head, and so it, you get a thumping sound, like your heart. Just, that's what happens when you asphyxiate yourself as, in that way, or on, you know, forcibly, obviously, same effect. But they cut him down because he's a cop. They cut him down. I say, next time we're not going to cut you down. Right. Just stay out of white folks' business, you know. Yes. So stay out of the white folks' business. I don't. It doesn't sound right coming out of me, Sam. <clears throat> Hey, it was a line in the show, so you know. Yuck. All right. But um yeah, so so we're going we go into um um you know the next scene. Yeah, so Will Will encounters a mugging in in the in a in a, like a back alley. He's still wearing mm -hmm. the the ropes on his hands. He's got, mm -hmm. you know, the noose around his neck dangling still. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the hood he's holding in his hands. He pokes eye holes in the hood and then just just gets to work beating some some muggers beating them. so 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 here's so he just got from the hang mm -hmm. you know the mock execution and everything i'm just sitting up here just watching this he has amazing strength because to me he would have been so tired and so ready to <laughs> to not you know be involved in this it must have been like some extra adrenaline mm -hmm. going through him because he took these guys out just like that all that adrenaline and, and a surprise right Surprise! Right. Some guy in a mask showed up out of nowhere and is punching me in the. You know what I mean? It's 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 right. very obvious. And one of the things that makes this the fight scenes we see here more realistic is the element of surprise is always present. So right. there's always this. Everybody's always kind of doing this at first. Like what? <laughs> that kind of saves Will's life, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, we see that. I think they talk about that a little bit in Under the Hood. I think Hollis does. All right. So he goes. He goes back to June's apartment, right? Like covered mm -hmm. in blood and, and and you know having just beaten these people and he just goes, okay, I'm angry. He just says, okay, I'm angry. <laughs> great, very funny line. There. You were right. You're okay, okay, I'm angry. A, I'm an angry guy. You know. And then he sleeps until 3 p.m. But then he was in the paper. There was a write-up. We find it says, we find out that Will is indeed impacted by the trauma of his uh, youth, uh, yeah. detailing the plot of uh, trust in the law. 
which also is, if you have not realized it yet, where Will gets his last name, Reeves, because Boss Reeves is the uh, name of the black <clears throat> sheriff of Oklahoma. So that is, in case you hadn't, we hadn't mentioned that previously, that's where that's from. Mm-hmm. All right. So, June brings up an interesting point here, which is that those town folks, you know, the white people we're dealing with are probably not going to be as accepting of what you want to do right. as the white people in this show. And right. that's obviously demonstrated by the fact that the police just beat you up and left you for dead, right? Well, didn't leave you for dead, but huh. basically mock executed yeah. you. The police did that. Police that's did crazy. That, right. That's out of bounds. Yeah. And right. so June paints Will's face to look like a white person right here, like a domino mask, which is a, he's a photo negative of the Lone Ranger now. <laughs> he's, right, right. He's, and I, I want to <laughs> see, I, I love that it's a black and white picture now. This is one of the things right. about this that makes this so, so great as a stylistic choice to be in black and white because you don't have to get, the, it doesn't have to be perfect, Right. Right, it has right, to be right, right. believable, and in my opinion, Shakespearean and its its flimsiness. It doesn't mm-hmm. even have to make mm-hmm. any sense because all you ever see is this much of him, and he's moving around and beating you, right. beating you senseless. Right. I mean, let's not forget yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your it, memory it, of this attack is not going to be great anyway. Right, exactly, exactly. You know, it's it's not like you know he's going to be just out there doing like press conferences and mm-hmm. stuff. Well. He actually does do one a little later, but uh, it's not like now, it's not right? Like... Not 1080 video from some <laughs> dude's basements, you know. Anyway, Nerd Cyclopedia <laughs> right. Studios. Uh, yeah, we're proud of it. <laughs> Nerd Cyclopedia, uh, we are existing. All right. Yep. Uh, this. So yeah, so so we get the makeup and everything. So you know, June uh, reasons that he should, um, in order to protect. You know, he has to conceal his identity because if he's out there doing things as a black man and everything, you know, he's going to be persecuted even further. So if he um, made it seem like he was a white person doing this, it would be more expect, you know, more accepted, you know. So hence him going to doing a hood and doing um, and doing an inversion, like you said, of the uh, white paint on his face and everything to make it look as if he's a, a white, a white male in um inside the hood and this is the clearest depiction in recent memory of a double standard in effect because Mm -hmm. as a black man will could do literally none of these things without and without there being a nationwide manhunt and (laughs) and in the 1930s the fbi was famous for hunting down and executing criminals like like tom tom dillinger and bonnie and clyde i mean they never went to trial like that didn't right. happen back then. Like Machine Gun Kelly right. didn't go to right. trial, uh, right. so the stakes are you know they don't, they're not never gonna get higher. Uh, and that and that's just and again those are those are white criminals, right? Those mm-hmm. are white criminals. So I I think that's another thing to to say. Those are the white criminals. That's how they're treating them. Uh, Will in this in and the way they show him with the binoculars here with the you, know, you can see that his his white skin under his under his mask is so mm-hmm. it sells it for me. It sells it yeah. for me, and I, I, I'm yeah. not going to question it again. Um, the, the the way they just sell it, period, and the reason and the motivation in him on doing it, because essentially you had to make an excuse or a reason as to why what we've known of this character since, like, the 80s, and, you know, mid-80s, you know, we were reading this thing, like, you know, numbers of times and stuff. So how is this, this, this man who we thought was white all of a sudden black now, you know? And it tracks from the very beginning because we see Angela, you know, paint her face, um, you know, in a, um, in a, in a, um, you know, black, um, you know, paint and everything. And Will's, Will, Will's inversion of mm-hmm. that is it, it just tracks because it, it just tracks. It tracks from the beginning because the information we have about Hooded Justice is so flimsy, and because we never see the real, you know what I mean, the the living hooded justice we only see this right. media representations of him yes so yeah he's the most yes. secretive one it's american hero story <laughs> absolutely so it's absolutely believable that he would you know be a black person hiding uh and as a white person um mm-hmm. it makes a lot of sense and, and it makes sense as far as who the character is and th- why is he wearing the noose was a question i always had because if mm-hmm. he is you know is he the hangman? Is he the wrongly accused? 
No. He was... He was executed. He is justice denied finally. Come mm-hmm. back to claim what is rightfully his. Mm-hmm. And that's the next scene, by the way. We're about to see some uh, some reclaiming of what is his. Just a little bit. So mm-hmm. guess what? Fred is... He's like, I followed Fred around, and guess what? He's pretty openly racist. Owns a store. <laughs> People just shop there all the time. They go right on in, and they're like, "They're like, I'd like to hear something racist, and I'd like some beans." <laughs> I guess. You know. uh, so, it's, it's it's funny with this scene too. Remember, um, you know, American yeah. Hero Stories version of this. Scene. Yeah, totally different, right? <laughs> totally, totally different. different. Totally different. So it's 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 it's, it's amazing too because of what Hollywood does to entertain mm-hmm. you versus what actually happened in history, but what te- people take as gospel. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why Agent Petey is so annoyed at, you know, the American Hero story is because, you know, he knows, like, you know, the actual history mm-hmm. of what actually happened. But Hollywood is sort of like, you know, paintbrush this thing into something so dramatic and so, you know, un- 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 unreal in a way or hyper real, I should well, say. Well, they've taken, you know, they've taken the villains and made them less, like, more sympathetic because obviously... Uh, there's not going to be a more a, a less sympathetic figure than the Ku Klux Klan. I'm just not. I, right. I'm not going to be able to come up with a less sympathetic group other than the Nazis. <laughs> but they're just a branch. They're branch of the same tree, in my opinion. Right. Uh, we, we have this this uh, this attack on the Cyclops Clan, and this element of surprise because uh, everybody, even Fred, even says like, "What the fuck are you? Like, what are say, you? Who the, say who the fuck? Yeah, are who you are? Right? Everyone's just sort of in disbelief, and he is just wailing on people." Just wailing on mm-hmm. him, and these are the and mm-hmm. is this the same racist cop from the mock execution? It's the same guy, right? Yeah, yeah. that's the same okay, guy. Because yeah, I think yeah, he also yeah, yeah. was sitting next to him at, at graduation too. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, taking the there's something about taking a a racist sort of conservative villain like the Klan and replacing them with like down on your luck. Machine gun men, you know, the yeggs they used to call mm-hmm. them. Okay. That is a political whitewashing of, of the history. So yeah. that's something that yeah. I think we're definitely meant to know. That's a choice made by, uh, if, if anybody else, the historians who have, have sent the information, yeah. you know, down the, down the line to us, uh, the journalists and everybody. Yeah, in the universe. Plus, you know, to even make it a little lighter. So um, it was imagined in the American Hero story that uh, um, Hooded Justice, you know, did all that stuff. He actually made it into the store, you know, from the outside in. He jumped into um, the store. You know, go, he jumped into the store. <laughs> so we and, and he, he 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 submitted his justice and everything on like the bad guys within the so store, how, you know, saving like the the different um, um, people. So in there. how did the story get? How did the story? So the story transmitted to the press. Has to probably be at least in the bones similar to the story as transmitted to American Hero story. So this, so what was reported has they have to have based that off something, and you have to imagine it's the reporting. So who who, who told the they, reporters they, what I want to know? Whose story is it that this guy came in and stopped the robbery, and then mm-hmm. left? Like whose story is that? Is that? I, I'm I'm wondering if um if a lot of this is from Hollis Mason's book. Okay. You know, that they're basing a lot of this, you know, on. I mean, obviously, we don't have the full context of the book because it was only a few pages published in like the or that they wrote in the um, actual Washington graphic novel excerpts and stuff. But you haven't imagined like a lot of this information for the American Hero Story show is probably based on his book. Uh, I agree. That's probably where it's from now that I'm thinking about it since Sam told me. So thanks, Sam, for telling me. Uh, So Will leaps out the window because he doesn't want to get shotgun shot and who can blame him? Uh, we get a freeze frame, one of those Matrix bullet time freezes with all the glass flying everywhere, super cool. And my favorite part of the episode starts, and that's when Lori comes up and starts talking to Angela, saying, "You're in a coma, and we put, we did some coma e stuff." Anyway, here's Cal. <laughs> and we Cal is like, "It is I, <laughs> Calvin, your husband. Your name is Angela. Miss Libby's car is green." <laughs> I thought, I thought to myself that you know he, you know I know what he's doing, but it's just funny because he's going through it like that. Uh, right, he tries to bring right, bring right. Angela back, but she can't come back. She can't come back. She has to know what she has to know everything, right? This is right. so interesting. This information. 
And the way they position, like, you know, they freeze frame Angela, but they have her in the hood, you know, um, and, and she she's getting really emotional because, you know, Cal is telling her, we need you to come back. We need you to come back and everything, you know, and she's just getting emotional. We actually see like a tear, you know, coming down her eye and everything, but it's still freeze frame. It's, it was just some great direction in this the episode. The color started man. coming back a little yes. bit in the middle of that shot and it would go away yes. and she drifted away. Yeah, the, right, um, right, right, right. He says the president's Rod, Robert Redford. Robert Redford. <laughs> and then it skips to Roosevelt. The scene where he's talking about Roosevelt. Nelson Gardner shows up. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. June's talking about um, Roosevelt. I, huh? now, oh, yeah, he's not right, going right, to say right, this. Right. And then Nelson Gardner strolls in. Nelson, uh, <laughs> Captain Metropolis. We, we've seen him a couple. We've seen a couple shots of Captain Metropolis in the old stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh I did. I did a minor yay when I seen. I was like, oh yeah, they got Captain Trump. More screen time than any Caps ever got. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. You know, <laughs> Nelson has. He thinks that uh, thinks Will's feeding Hood of Justice information, and June laughs really hard <laughs> at him, but doesn't trust Nelson. Thinks Nelson's right. got ulterior motives, um, but Nelson invites Will to join the Minutemen. Well, he invites Hood of Justice to join the Minutemen because they're still playing that game. And and June kind of says, you know. Uh, who is is Captain Metropolis about your height and blonde? <laughs> June isn't stupid, guys. June is on point. She's been on point so far this whole Nelson's episode. Making a face like, like oh, <laughs> face every man makes when you find out his greatest yeah, but, secret. Well, 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 think about it. They're just starting, and all he had to do was just hide his little mask and everything. So it all sort of speaks into how superheroes, um. You know, the way they, 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 if they're not putting a whole hood on their face or, you know, covering their whole face, pretty much you're going to know who they are. You know, if they're putting just a Robin little mask on. But the press would keep their secrets. It's pretty obvious the press kept Nelson's secret right. and Hall's yeah, a right. secret. And, I mean, somebody kept it. Uh, this whole this whole conversation is so interesting. And, you know, one of the things, I know we talked about this on our, our series um, about the comic book is that mm-hmm. there was uh, a relationship between Hood of Justice and Captain Metropolis talked about in the uh, Under the Hood story, in those excerpts. Right. And uh, that's true here, too. So Will and Captain Metropolis do have a relationship. Uh, it is sexual yep. in nature. Uh, so mm-hmm. when, when Will says, how long have you known? Mm-hmm. It's such an interesting... Uh, it's such an interesting line because it means so many things Mm -hmm. Uh, in this context we see it meaning when did you know i was hooded justice it could have meant when did you know you were needed to be a superhero or when did you know Mm -hmm. you were gay or when did you know right right uh, right right right. that you were going to do these things It, it seemed like maybe will was looking to make a connection but nelson wanted to keep things to business Well, the whole thing about Nelson just picking up the fact that Will may have been, you know, gay is just really interesting, you know, especially when he came into their apartment, you know, house or what have you, and he, you know, um, slid his card to um, Will, and there was like a lingering thing, and you sort of notice it within that scene, June didn't look down, she looked straight at Will, so she was already ignoring that part. You know, or maybe playing oblivious. I don't know if it. Well, that sort of signal she, thing was a common thing back then, when right. when it was extremely dangerous to be a homosexual person. Um, right. You know, mm-hmm. in 1938. Again, not to harp on how much worse things were for certain people back then, but you <laughs> know, the Nazis were still running around in Germany. They have were about to gear the Holocaust up for real. Uh, so yeah. you know, it was not yeah. safe to be wow. a gay person. Wow. So there were secret kind of in ways to kind of know that they would, right. it was like sort of a secret language. <clears throat> anyway, mm-hmm. not that I know a lot about that stuff. If we wanted to have an expert on, we probably could, uh, but just to well, give you, a you know, not as progressive as, as, as if thing, as there are things nowadays. Absolutely. So it took a while for America to get progressive, but this is, this is a lot of secrets that Will has, you know, a lot of secrets, uh, his super, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. his homosexuality, mm-hmm. his, Mm-hmm. Uh, racial identity is a secret now, which can't yeah can't right, be an easy right, thing right. to deal with. That sort of he has to suppress he has to suppress being a black man. 
you know, and you in his know, regular and, life too. His regular in his regular life he has and everything. Tamp down yeah. and stuff. And, and tamp down, you know that, and uh, to hide the fact that he's a superhero and everything, and also hide the fact that he's a um, you know a homosexual and everything. And he has to become a white and person to get justice du- for black and, people. And also played a double life mm-hmm. of being you know um, June's um, husband and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, Which we see portrayed I mean, very well. That cut, that slide cut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. And he's on top of June. Uh, yeah. 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 It's it's a it's a lot of tr- and it's all it's all framed in the trauma that happened to him way back in you know the Tulsa rise and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot going on with Will. He's got some stuff <laughs> going, going on. on Starts a whole superhero trend. Uh, yeah. Un- unintended. He says. Nelson tells him, your participation will legitimate the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And it's a cultural appropriation, right? So jazz and rock and roll and hip-hop and mass adventuring. All, All right. things white people stole from <laughs> black people, right? <laughs> so it may... It, yeah. Even that is such a... Because in this time in particular, so much mm-hmm. innovation was happening in the black community that was not happening in the white community, uh, especially right. musically... I'm a big fan of old, mm-hmm. like, um, Delta Blues. I just think it sounds good. So, like, Robert mm-hmm. Johnson, I think, died in 36 or 37. So this is all contemporary, right? It's all the okay. same time. Uh, so that's sort of theft. Very common back right. then. Uh, right. Interesting, interesting that the only person who's f- actually aware of that is Nelson. <laughs> like, Nelson yeah. knows that. No one else yeah, does. He, um, yeah, no one else does. Uh, he, he just, you know, but he takes it upon himself. To, to sort of like you know spark this, mm-hmm. you know, but he um, or you know, terribly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lures yeah, him yeah. in. Will brings mm-hmm. his evidence. Will brings his binder full of evidence about this conspiracy that we know is real. That we, he's uncovering in real time. And Nelson sort of says, sit down. Will he's like sit down, hooded justice. We're not gonna we're gonna do this stuff with the bank. And we see that extremely <laughs> racist. Extremely racist dollar bill sign from from the premiere. Yeah, well, yeah, we saw that in the premiere. Yeah, yeah somebody was, somebody had it as a souvenir. <laughs> and, and it was in it was in the racist house. Yeah. It was in the white supremacist house in the house of white supremacy. Seven mm-hmm. uh, K. Okay. So appropriated and then subverted. Right. Yeah. Uh, June has herself a baby sometime around 1940-41, and then there is a riot in the movie theater showing the secret light of Walter Mitty, which is a short story where Walter Mitty has a lot of daydreams and has adventures that aren't real. Mm-hmm. Sub-captain and blah, blah, blah. Um, this riot was caused by a flickering light and a voice that told uh, told them to do bad things. Right. And we see a... Uh, uh, we see some uh, someone carrying out the projector... The mind mm-hmm. control apparatus, and mesmerizing apparatus, mm-hmm. and Will tries to call in Nelson and the rest of the Minutemen to help him. Well, hold on. So, so we know this is a um, you know a mind control mesmerizing apparatus because before mm-hmm. this, Will found some evidence of yes. something going on um, in the um, the grocery store. In the in the grocery store, yeah, 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 in the um, you know, the back um things of the grocery, the the back rooms of the grocery store and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's seen like the mesmer mesmerism um, for the masses, stuff. right, right. Map with numbers. Written, I had this written down. I skipped it. Were written by W. C. Florentine. Yes, W. C. Florentine. <laughs> I paused that too. We got burned a couple weeks ago because I forgot Fog Dancer was an in-universe novel myself. From the egg, right, the egg right, lady right. was reading Fog Dancer, which is by Shea, who the, wrote all the crazy stuff for the squid. Uh, right, right. So, so, um, so, so I said I, I sent I text you this article from Men's Health magazine. Okay, you know, so apparently Men's Health is, is doing like um, recaps of what, <laughs> <laughs> but um, they wanted to they they were talking about like the um, the fact that mesmerism is a real mm-hmm. thing, you know, um, and it is what I'm just looking at my notes here, so. Mesmerism is a fact, in fact, a real psychological method, also known as animal magnetism. You know, it was developed in the 18th century, psych- you know, by a psych- psychologist named Franz Mesmer, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it involves taking over someone or something using a trance state. Okay. Now, 
wasn't Moloch doing some of the sort of same things right around that time as yeah, well? Yeah, I always thought Moloch was was Moloch the Magnificent, and his deal was that he did cold mm -hmm. reads and magic. But it okay. would make sense okay. because we know psychics are realish mm -hmm. in this universe, so it makes sense that Moloch had those sorts of powers. Although right, right. you would think he would avail himself of them when necessary, when under the thumb of Rorschach in 1985. <laughs> so who knows? Right. Who right. knows? Exactly. But there are psychics. But, like that is real. Yeah, yeah. That mesmerizing thing. Um. So for those who are thinking that okay, this is just something that they cooked up for the show and stuff. This um. This is was actually this is actually a thing. Yeah. So the real deal stuff, and uh. Nelson Nelson's response to Will is pretty um oh, disappointing. Yeah, disheartening. Yeah. Uh says, you know, we don't want to get political here and the clan is really a political thing and we just don't do that stuff. <laughs> Although, to give Nelson this much credit, Sam, if I called you up and mm -hmm. said, You gotta come down to the point. There's some mind control dudes down here controlling people's minds. You probably wouldn't come down to the point. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> that premise is a little silly, uh, but it's real. And what does he say? He says, if you want to solve black unrest on your own. Oh. So. I mean, first of all, he preps it like, you know, we know, you know, black people always make ha or having riots and yeah. stuff as if it's a thing, you know, in Harlem and everything. Yeah, so like they call that Tulsa is... attack a riot. That's a riot. <sighs> It's 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 a it's a disappointing thing, um, and then just shuts his whole you know thing down, <laughs> you know as far as that. But we also see it in the PDpedia files mm -hmm. that you know he has a ton of regret. <laughs> yeah, Nelson. <laughs> this this guy, you know, I I, I don't. When, when did Nelson die? When did he pass away? Seventy five. Okay, okay. So that would have put him about what age? Sixty seven. Okay, all right. So as you get older, you know, you start reflecting. Um, um, remembering things, things, uh, and, and it goes back to what we, what um, Sally Jupiter said in, in, in the Watchmen graphic novel. You know, as you, <laughs> as you get older, those memories become brighter. You know, um, the, something in that context of the what she said. The future, so, uh, the president is grimy, but the cat past gets brighter all the time. Uh, brighter all the time and everything. So you know, he goes older and um, you know, just starts reflecting and and. And note, and, and well, you got to read the PD, PD files to really get the context of this. But <clears throat> he appreciates, or he he thinks about the best things that happened in his life, and Will was one, you know, was was one of the main things that happened. To he him. says, hence him. If Will refuses, you know, donate everything to the Southern Poverty Law Center, I think at a certain point. So yeah, yeah, uh, he, he he wanted to he wanted to leave everything to Will, and but you know he didn't really know what um. Where to find him? Um, um, how to get to him and everything. But you know, they he he left this note to sort of narrow it down between like you know, uh, 1910 to 1915 is when he was born or what have you, um, and where he was at the time. Um, you know that happened. You know the Tulsa. You know, so if they can use that information to sort of they, they it, keep a records back then was really hard. <laughs> you know, but. Um, Looking at those files, he really had some. Uh, he really had a thing for, um, you know, Rip Will. You know, he really had a love for him. Yeah. And it's a shame. It's a shame to that that in this context of um, of him just denying Will um, the help that he needed in order to go after these cyclones or whatever was just shot down like. There's that. something weird about people who who can experience that sort of empathy on a personal level but not be able to extend that to a, a more like a macro level, you know? Like, yes. Yes. Like, yes. Great way. Great way. Like Nelson, that. you know, says, uh, calls him beautiful and, mm -hmm. you know, thought Hoda justice was a white guy, but it doesn't, I mean, obviously he's not turned off by the fact that Will's, Will's a black person, um, right. but just isn't able to see. Attract yeah. It's definitely attracted to him for sure. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen that. Right. Um, but he's just not able to, to see, his Will's perspective on these sorts of things. He's just blinded. And I think that's what he says in the will, which is the PDPDR thing well, you're talking I, about. Yeah, yeah, I think it's an agenda that he already had with um, you know, the Minutemen, hence, you know, them doing like their their um their um publicity, you know, ad uh supported stuff with the bank and everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um he already had an agenda with the Minutemen and what Will was doing was not part of that mm -hmm. agenda. 
In fact, if if he if they if if they had really got too much into it, it probably would have destroyed their whole, you know, their whole um, you know, publicity thing. You know, the minute when is is what I'm interpreting was all about publicity. It, it's not extra made it like that. It's definitely mm-hmm. if you ever want to overturn the Apple cart, right? It's mm-hmm. going to be hard to get the dude that owns the Apple cart to pay for that. <laughs> Great way for that. Yeah. So like, I get it. At a certain point, you need some sort of publicity, but certainly they weren't editorially vetting these things in any way that was meaningful. Um, anyway, so Fred knocks. Fred's behind, sitting behind Will. Fred, old Fred, old racist Fred from 1938 with the old... Hey, where the hell are you come with from? With the old Molotov. <laughs> yeah. Says, hey, do I know you? He says, I don't... He doesn't recognize Will for some, for some reason. I guess it's been a minute. Or, 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 or every the comment he makes well, is, you know, all you jigs start looking the same. He does say that. <laughs> Woo! That's, man, man, But it man, also man, says man. that committing an arson and getting arrested for it is not an unusual thing for Fred. Like, I will tell you right now, <laughs> if I had been arrested for arson at any time in the last 17 years, I would be able to tell you a lot about that night. Uh, all of it would be lies, you know, of course. I, I probably wouldn't even be doing a podcast with, you know, Scott right here. <laughs> anyway, this is a real hot episode. Hot! Right. It's on fire! <sighs> be making this face, like, all the time. You never know why. Oh, uh, thanks. Hey, what's going on with this guy? I don't think I want to talk to him over the internet. All right. Uh, Will's, Will just shoots Fred here. Uh, you know, yeah. Fred ain't going to get better. Uh, Will also not interested in stakes. Can't be bribed, right. and certainly not by stakes. Right, right. Uh, Will's not going to take any prisoners tonight. Will's not taking prisoners. Shoots them all. Shoots them all. Hey, Will is cold. I mean, that anger in him, I mean, he he's just like, fuck this shit. You know, I'm taking everybody out. You know, it's not, it's not terrible. your regular, it's not, this is, it's not your regular superhero, like, you know, costume. Okay. Well, I'm going to just take them, you know, disable them and everything. Will is just like some straight vigilante punisher type shit. You know? <laughs> very, you know, very matter of fact, but you know, he already beat these people up once. Like he's yeah, already told you yeah, to stop and, this. Right. Right. You've taken right, lives. Right. Right. You cannot be right, allowed to continue right. with this plan. I mean, bottom line. Not at all. Right, right. I mean, and, and you can understand his point. Um, you know, perhaps uh, would be preferable to follow the law. But sometimes the mm. law don't come when you're where it yeah, needs to go. No, no. Will yep. piles them up. Oh, so what about this? Like the head racist cop, right? Gets strangled at uh-huh. the end, uh, mm-hmm. giving his screed. And uh, we see kind of how they did it, right? It's this flickering right, right. light. Yeah, we see that all the inner workings and everything. He's actually talking and speaking and telling, you know, um, things that he wants them to do and what how he's mesmerizing them with his voice and everything with the flicker. And he got all the way down to hit your like stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. Like it was vicious. Oh, man. I got all the way down there. Uh, Marcus comes home with his projector souvenir, which is an important mm-hmm. detail for sure. And mm-hmm. Marcus is wearing that white, uh, you know, the the white mask makeup. Mm-hmm. Uh, Will does not like that. And June says, I'm going to go to Tulsa with Marcus. Mm-hmm. Uh, Will then uses the flashlight on Judd, which is a special flashlight. Remember mm-hmm. what I said in our very first episode on the show? I wonder what was making that flickering light. And then our very yeah. second episode of the show, I said, I'm an idiot. It's that flashlight. <laughs> Turns out I'm only half an idiot. Because uh, <laughs> it was a weird flashlight. A special flashlight, and it, and it turns out Will wasn't lying. No. He actually did. <laughs> well, at least he didn't physically do it, but he did hang, um, you know, Judd up there and yeah. killed him. He, he, he you told know, him. Uh, Angela. Angela was like, "No, he doesn't know no possible way he can do that." But you hey, hang yourself. You don't know Will. <laughs> you, you can hang yourself now. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch. I love the way they transition it to like the present. Well, at least it was a flashback present. But I love the way they transition into the present within his memory uh, with the music because you got, like, the old-timey music and everything playing throughout the episode, stuff that you really couldn't recognize. I, I don't know if Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross was, you know, playing, you know, doing the music throughout the whole episode, but if they were. Standards. 
Okay, but if, if they were like re you know re redoing it and everything, it was brilliant. But the way they transitioned to like the main you know the main Watchmen mm-hmm. theme that's been playing through all these, these it was just uh, it 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 made me feel like okay man. I love I love the Watchmen theme. I love I love it. Music is excellent. <laughs> They've been doing such a great 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 uh, job with that. The sound design's real good, like you're saying. I uh, I really did like the in media music they were using the the 30s and 40s sort of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's uh-huh. sort of music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It really set it really set a setting, and that's a hard thing to do when you only have monochrome, and yeah. that's a hard thing to do when none of the actors. And the mm-hmm. whole episode basically are a part of your cast, your main cast. You don't see any of them. Mm-hmm. You know, you see. Uh, you oh see Regina yeah, that's King a, a great bit. point, man. Yeah, it, it, the, what, I thought this was going to be a Re- Regina King centric episode. Essentially, it is, but it's not. It's her character. Centric. We see a we we see a character that we only um, was this the first time we've seen him? Mid- will adult the, this, adult young Will? I think we've not seen before. The, we have we have not seen him, you know. So this was essentially a whole, you know, our all our main cast is essentially booted out this mm-hmm. episode. Yet, <laughs> yet this is probably the best episode of the it's TV. Excellent, so far. excellent. <laughs> Completely inverts your expectations. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, so so Judd tells him you don't really know what's going on. Right, and, and you don't know really. Which, you don't really know. By me. the way, might as well be like if you're a character in this show. The first line you say in every single scene might as well be like, you don't even know what's really going on. Like everybody's kind of oh, got that one yeah, upper on everybody right. else. Oh man. Uh, and then he's, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I'm an audience. <laughs> and how about, uh, Will's sign off to Judd here. Oh, well, I know you Cyclops. And then we hear Judd hang himself. Right, right, While right, 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 right. Uh, and then, we get this 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 ending here is so excellently shot and excellently conceived and what basically happens is we have a like a split memory of the mm-hmm. same person from Will Will's perspective mm-hmm. in the 40s and <coughs> Angela's perspective in the late 70s mm-hmm. so we have June go away as a young mother and come back as a grandmother mm-hmm. and the effect is is so uh, it's so interesting, and the way that uh, she yanks Angela out. And, 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 and before that, how about the way Regina King imitates or or does Louis Gossett Jr.'s you know movements mm-hmm. and everything in the chair right. while watching um you know Don Johnson you know Judd you know being hung and everything. I thought that was just excellent acting because she appropriated like all his movements and mannerisms on how he would look as an old guy looking at this guy being yeah. hung. You know Regina King, she's just oh she was she was she knocked it out the park Phenomenal. with that. You know. Phenomenal. It's just good work. So the, the, the whole cast. Is... Yeah, just 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 good work as far as that. We had like um, you know, the image of the um um of Will's mom playing the piano still. You know, that was like sprinkled throughout as a theme throughout the episode, period. You know, they kept going back to like the um, you know, the the soundtrack of Trust in the Law <laughs> being played throughout like the whole episode and it ended on that part. And like you said, um Will's mom as an older pulling Angela out. Uh, the way that transition was so so neat. Uh, we have lady, then Lady True says, "Welcome back to Angela." So, was she reading a newspaper or something? She was just chilling. Lady True, I, I didn't see what she was reading. I wasn't okay. Missed it. Okay. Anyway, that's the so, end of the episode. So, it's a great so, way to end us. There. Yeah, that that was that was the end. So so what was that on her arm? Like she was. It was a what, double. Was I, was like a double going? IV. So okay. So nostalgia is a pill. It's, mm-hmm. And that is generally my understanding of drugs, and this is generally, <laughs> generally, is that something in a pill form usually not as strong as something in an IV form. Like if okay. they really want to get you, they need to get a lot of something in you. They usually don't give you a pill. You know, they right. usually shoot you up full of IV. Uh, my whole experience on that, by the way, is when I hurt my leg this one time. And they gave me a shot of this crazy stuff. It was I was I was whacked out and I had like six fingers in my leg because I had this big cut. Anyway, <laughs> I was just like I was watching the Pirates play the Cubs. It was a weird day. Uh, 
So that's this episode. I want to see the making of on this one. Like I want to see that stuff so yeah, bad. Man. I just want to see it yeah. in another setting everything yeah. up. I want to see if yeah. they're like all yeah. the clothing is monochrome. <laughs> if it's not, I want to see all that stuff. Uh, well, well, the one part of the episode that really got me was the transition when um um from they had it set in one um, room where they went from her having been oh, pregnant yeah. to where the um you know the child was you know watching Will put on his makeup mm-hmm. and everything you know the whole transition of them playing in the room going out of the room and you know going back with her cooking dinner and stuff her being pregnant and still having a child. <clears throat> the the transition all within that one room of time passing mm-hmm. you know a lot of time passing transitions was a really good way um you know being um was a really great way in this episode of being presented yeah i i like that cut a lot i thought showing uh that scene where where will pick june up was just such mm-hmm. a great having that in color behind him in high def Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's still yeah, so vivid. Yeah, these yeah. memories are so vivid and real for him, and so much more real than these other memories. That is so neat. You know, it would be possible to. I mean, I, it seems to me like Angela could be a clone. Uh, it seems to me like they That's could all possible. be clones. Uh, I mean, what 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 if um what was this? It was on Reddit or whatever. But what if these were purposeful memories mm-hmm. that will knew angela well or real already wanted angela to take some of those um you know take those pills and everything mm-hmm. what if those were purposely put into angela to sort of distract her um in a way that um the memories aren't as real as what we may think you know i bet what that does <laughs> is i bet that conditions you to receive other memories if you take mm-hmm. a nostalgia overdose because there's already so many input memories right that you would be, mm-hmm. it would be hard for you to sift out anything else that came in that was outside of that range. So mm-hmm. if I wanted to, you know, like if I think about my childhood years, right? Mm-hmm. And I think about like, um, let's say the year 1988. I don't remember a lot from 88. I remember Greg Lugane is hitting his head. Let's say I wanted to insert something from 88, right? And I was taking nostalgia because I had a memory issue related to the present. Mm-hmm. And you inserted mm-hmm. a bunch of my present memories into nostalgia, right? You could okay. slide something in there from 1988. And you wouldn't be looking, I wouldn't be looking for a fake memory because I'd already mm-hmm. know there were, you know, heightened memories already there. Ah, okay. So you could slide okay. one in, slide okay. one in in the 70s right. or the 80s and mm-hmm. almost like Inception changed someone's entire motivation for doing something. How would you know? Great movie, great, great movie, by the way. Yeah, Inception is good. Uh, all right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's possible that she may have been accepted. I got a lot of. It's possible. I, I got a lot of clone theories because, uh, you know, the Pedipedia files this week exploded. The, 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 there's so right. much stuff in there. If you don't check, if you don't read Pedipedia, you're you're not getting the whole story, really. Yeah, you're, you're you're not getting the whole story. Like I said, the whole context of you know uh, what we were talking about Nelson Gardner and his um, you know, rounded out his 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 death and everything. Well, you know, what his that that last will and yeah. testament that he did, um, sort of rounds out his character. If you if you um, if you don't read it, you just sort of leave it as, as what the episode is. But reading it rounds out this you know rounds out his character and everything. Reading these PDPD files rounds out this whole series. Yeah, this week we have <laughs> um, we have Nelson's last one testament. We have a, mm-hmm. a memo written by Lori Blake. Lori, excellent, mm-hmm. excellent, excellent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's feisty. And we have Dale Petey. Oh wait, what's the third one? Ah, uh, no, the third one is it was it was, was Petey. It was Dale, Dale Petey wrote the letter that was the preface uh, to Gardner's will. Right. What was the third thing, Sam? What did I? I read it just like a couple hours ago. Well, well, then let's touch on a little bit on Petey because he had a change of heart. Right. <clears throat> you know, as you know, towards the end of that. Um, oh, you know, Lori's Petey memo. Fought. Lori's memo. Let's talk. Let's talk about Lori's memo first. Okay. Okay. Because okay, there's there's okay. so much in these. I just want to. I do want to break these down just a little bit before, rather okay. than just mention them. So Lori's memo essentially indicates everything Angela's seen is is information that's aware that the investigative team knows because they're listening mm-hmm. to her and she's talking her way through all this. Like all of Will's lines are coming out of her mouth in, in right. her hospital room. Um, and that's something that is going to have some far ranging consequences. The reason I wanted to bring that up is because, like you said, DLPD has a change of heart um, after the revelation that 
put a justice mm-hmm. to this, a black person, it totally changes the way yeah. he views everything. It just totally changes his whole perspective. It's, it's, it's amazing because, you know, you meet a lot of people in life and everything who thinks about certain things in one aspect, mm-hmm. but until they get actually educated um, and their whole perspective just changes, mm-hmm. You know, you, you you think about things in certain, and you and you and you're sort of you were sort of raised and brought up in a certain you know um, realm and certain way of life. You know, and you you take your beliefs as gospel. You take beliefs as gospel. Like if your parents raised you in a certain way, you know, all of a sudden you find out what they told you is not so much not the truth, but what they, um, I guess what they thought was the truth wasn't the truth, and they taught that to you. You know, but you find out on your own that um, it either was a lie or what was told to them was not the truth, if that makes any sense. And we've all um, been through this changed, because they changed what Pluto yeah. was a couple years ago, and that took yeah. its toll yeah. on my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 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 you you take you you grow up with certain beliefs, then all of a sudden you get educated. Mm-hmm. You find out on your own, you know, if you want to find these things out, you find out on your own, and then your mind gets blown when you find out something that was taught to you was a um was just a was just not what you thought, right. you know. This is this is sort of revelation that PD, you know, has found out in, in these files and everything. He's he, he's he's just looking at now. Okay, will um yeah, will was hooded justice. He was a black man. Um, he was uh, what PD assumed just like everybody else, including me, including you, <laughs> know that he was a um you know a white guy, you know, under that mask. And it makes a difference because it just reframes the whole story. It it makes it makes it it definitely changes what superheroism, what mass adventuring is is, mm-hmm. is in this universe. It has mm-hmm. taken something that has been largely the realm of the white supremacist, of the hyper violent, of the mm-hmm. addled, you know, of mm-hmm. the the psychotic uh, and and, mm-hmm. and it really says, you know, these aren't people the of justice is not someone who is frivolously choosing to intervene in business that does not affect him. Hood right. of justice is not a billionaire in a tower who chooses right. to come down and decides I'm going to intervene and I'm going to intervene on this side. Hood of, Hood of justice is a person whose entire existence is rooted mm-hmm. in, in, white supremacist trauma. violence and the trauma, trauma that causes exactly and he knows because he can remember who the perpetrators were and he yes. knows the yes. stakes yes and he that's when he puts on the mask when he puts on the the, the white face paint the white skin face paint he's saying yeah. i am going to take on the mantle of my oppressors and i am ah. going to use it to get justice for myself and for the people that i love uh, um, Judd asked him at the end there he's like who are you you know Will didn't say hooded justice he said justice, justice. he said just justice, justice straight up you know just justice you know I'm, I'm justice basically just coming back mm-hmm. you know at the same tree that I was hung at you know um, mock you know mock's execution style and everything this is what I'm about to do to mm-hmm. you and it'll be it'll be interesting to see if um if the files, if the show actually takes on the um the um real time events of the files, because Petey ch- has his mind changed, you know, or you know, with uh with his knowledge of hooded justice and everything, so um it'll be real interesting, you know, if they bring Petey back with these in these last three episodes, how his perspective or how his attitude will change. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you know, what's this gonna do? Because you know, the Tulsa Police Department is mm-hmm. rife with mass adventure iconography and detectives who have you know directed the uh the iconography of max adventurism toward the state and right. the murderer of the police chief is a mass mm-hmm. adventurer and not just any mass adventurer the most prominent one who's being featured on the largest television show that there is so oh, man. so that is going to yeah, have significant a, repercussions it's... for for what the police department's willing to do, I mean, are are you willing to wear a mask if the if hooded justice murdered your police chief? It'd be interesting to see if is is this something that they may actually bury? Like, is there a really a nest? Oh, well, there's two things I, don't know. I know. Uh, I know. I know. There's okay. two things <clears throat> that if you bury them, they don't uh, 
They don't get rusty. Two things. One, gold. Gold doesn't tarnish. I don't know if okay. you knew that. It's one of the that's what's what is special about it, right? That's why we like it. Yeah, what makes it valuable, yeah. right? Uh and uh, the other thing is the truth. If you bury the truth, it stays there. It stays there. It doesn't change the fact that it was the you truth. Can dig it up ten years later, it, it's the truth. It's still there. Yeah. Oh man. Great, great analogy, bud. And, what, and with that <laughs> I'm going to stop talking about Watchmen for a minute. I'm going to talk to you about All something right. else, something I want to talk to about. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be this right here of my mouse cursor ever comes back from my other screen. Where are you? This thing right here. All right. We're going to go ahead and pull up. Yeah, buddy. That's right. Mando. Mandalorian Bounty BS, the podcast where we talk about the Disney Plus show, The Mandalorian. I want you guys to check it out. You should stop in and uh, listen uh, listen to an episode or two for me. Uh, yeah, we'll be out with the, uh, another episode in the next couple. Yeah, days Yeah, you know, here, it's so. not just me like, and Sam. It's uh, friends of the show and uh, friends of ours who are gonna get together and, and talk about the Mandalorian in a way that is not only informative but also very interesting. So we hope you'll join us for that. Uh, also, do not forget our live show which will be after episode seven, which I think, is there an episode this week? I think there is 10 yeah. or five mm -hmm. right after the next episode. We're going to be right here live on the nerd cyclopedia channel, breaking down our thoughts, giving you some instant feedback about what we thought about the episode. Um, that's uh, those are the projects I think we got now. Oh, nobody cares about mm -hmm. our other project. And that's nobody cares. Yep. The podcast sure. where I talk about what I like to talk about. Uh, when's it going to come out? I don't know. Nobody cares. So whatever. <laughs> Nobody cares. Really cares. <laughs> he does. He does it at his own free will. People, that's right. You know. So you we know. Didn't do it. We didn't do one last week, but that's okay because we're skipping a week on Rick and Morty airing. So I have hey. extra to catch up. And podcasts are forever, ladies and gentlemen. They don't go away. Much like the truth. Just like, Just the, like truth. the truth. <laughs> uh, what you got? You got. Make sure that you guys are um subscribing. Make sure that you're following us. You know, we, we talk a lot on Twitter and everything. So make sure you're interacting with us. We love to, you know, to hear your thoughts and, you know, to get some, you know, feedback and everything on everything that we're doing here at Nerd Cyclopedia. Make sure that you're, you know, following our website, Nerd Cyclopedia. We got some really decent articles on there, you know, about the Mandalorian and Watchmen, of there course, are. and anything and nerd, nerd, nerd culture, you know, wise and everything. We got some good interviews and stuff on there, too. Check that out. Comic um, creators, so just authors. Make sure, you know, we like to talk to people. Authors and everything. Check out. Yeah, we, we love talking to people. <laughs> Even ourselves. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So yeah, much yeah, so yeah, that yeah, we yeah. started a podcast company. Uh, <laughs> that's what I got this week. Uh I'm super excited to see yeah. where we're going. It feels like yeah, yeah, great, great, great episode. Did you catch the um, HBO released the um, the Minimum picture? No, <laughs> the Minimum photo. Yeah, they made, they released a Minimum photo of everybody that was in that um, that wasn't blurred out. I see that. All right. <laughs> so very interesting to see. I want to see their takes so. on the costumes. I gotta go look at that. I'm oh man. That. All righty. Any uh, anything else? No, that's basically it. Like I said, can't wait to see the next episode and can't wait to, you know, get to feedback um, at Watching Watchmen and Nerd Cyclopedia. Make sure you um, send it that in, in and we'll, you know, try to get you guys on the air. Hit that up. Uh, and from uh, all of us here at Nerd Cyclopedia Studios uh, and on behalf of my Dalmatian, uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you again real soon. Peace. Yeah, so I mean, like, I, 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 they've been shading the Hooded Justice thing, but I really didn't think they were going to do it. <laughs> and you know alan moore they did alan it. moore did curse they them did right? we talked about that with uh, dr l so it's, it's it, it must not be a strong curse because you know this this, is, this show is cracking <laughs> <laughs>